Good afternoon, friends. Steve Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And this video right here, The Fullness of the Gentiles. I'm going to play here a little portion of this video for you guys so you can actually watch this for yourself. Uh, oh, it's, it's, it's about an hour long video, uh, really going into the issues of, uh, let me just see if I can pull it up far enough for you real quick. Uh, the fullness of the Gentiles become in, also from Romans 11, as well as I speak about uh, uh, the words of Jesus, where he says uh, uh, that Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. These are scriptures that have often been placed in the future uh, as a future fulfillment by myself included. I have to agree with that. Uh, but I really knew that this had a lot to do with prophecies because so many prophecies that have been fulfilled that were fulfilled back 2000 years ago or during 70 AD, things like that, that we still keep putting in the future. And, uh, and there were a couple of people when I played this over on the noon Institute uh, that still they're like, like I was, they're still believing that this is yet a future fulfillment. And I do know there's a lot of scripture that has compound fulfillments, no doubt. I mean, we're seeing a lot of earthquakes nowadays, something that this chapter talks about in Luke, where Jesus speaks about these things. But I think what you're going to hear in this message is really going to be a blessing to you. So I'm going to let about 20 minutes of this play here on Israeli News Live. But if you want to catch the rest of it there, uh, please jump over either to, to Danoon Institute, where you can see it, the fullness of the Gentiles, or iConnectFX.com. It's also loaded there. You can watch it there. Maybe you've already signed up there. In fact, if you've already signed up there, you've probably already got the notification. Uh, and that's something we're using more and more, too, with biblical teachings in the event we get knocked off of YouTube. So I do encourage you, subscribe, iConnectFX. Uh, also, subscribe to... Danoon Institute of Biblical Research. There it is right there. Danoon Institute right there. Uh, encourage you to do that. And also don't forget Fact News Network. Uh, jump on those channels there. Get, get involved so you know that you have a place to find us. Uh, in fact, Adam with uh, Marfugal just sent me a couple of messages today. Lots of people are being knocked off YouTube left and right. In fact, we had to put a lot of our content on unlisted because you can't say much on YouTube. Uh, of course, teachings are not nearly as bad, uh, but maybe there's some things in here they wouldn't like either, don't really know, but I hope it's a blessing to you. Thank you, and thank you for listening. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with the Noon Institute of Biblical Research, and uh, we are continuing in a, a series of messages that I've been doing, trying to unravel the biblical prophecies that we have been applying to future tense that have been fulfilled 2,000 years ago. Not to say that things do not continue on and, and still there are prophecies within the scriptures that are yet to be fulfilled, but in many cases, uh, a lot of the prophecies were fulfilled. And I have myself, like so many of you, have put so many of these prophecies in the, uh, the future, especially in the book of Zechariah, chapter 8, chapter 11. Uh, you know, a lot of these uh, really, really, really been putting, put into the future. I have on the screen for you right now, though, this is uh, the city of Jerusalem, a, a, a painting done depicting 70 AD when Jerusalem was sieged by Titus, the Roman gen general, uh, he's actually the son of uh, 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 the former, uh, gosh, where is it there? Let me see if I got it in here. Ves Vespian, I believe is his name. Uh, his father, who, yeah, v uh, Vespasian, who had returned to Rome ultimately to be proclaimed the next emperor and left his son Titus to finish the war. Titus began the siege of Jeru Jerusalem in 66 CE. And by the way, that siege did not end until around 73 AD. So course of about seven years, uh, this war went on to see, uh, and actually that was at Masada, where in 73, they, you know, 70 AD, they conquered uh, Jerusalem, but in 73, Masada fell, 
And of course, the, the Jews that were there committed suicide. Um, you know, and, and a lot of people look at Jerusalem and they say, well, you know, Jerusalem is supposed to be the light of the world. Well, it was. Uh, that's exactly what it was when Jesus Christ came. He was the light of the world. He constantly told his apostles, um, you are a candle that's set on a hill. And uh, so he clearly was showing the evidence that they were fulfilling this scripture. Even the law going out of Jerusalem, something that is being put right now in the future by many uh, teachers today. So I'm not here to throw uh, my kindred under the bus when I'm saying the things that I'm saying, but I'm trying to get uh, my own people as well as uh, Gentile believers to recognize the fact of uh, Scripture being fulfilled and the fact that the best thing we can do to help Israel today is to get the gospel of Jesus Christ to every Jewish believer there, there, believer there is, and not vice versa, not to put the people back underneath the law. That is the worst thing we can do. All right, now we're going to be focusing on a couple of scriptures here. We're going to be looking at Luke 21, specifically verse 24, and then we're going to be going into the book of Romans, uh, specifically chapter 11, verse 25. And these two verses are verses I know that have really hinged on a lot of question in people's minds. Uh, actually, was still hinging on my mind until I really prayerfully looked at this. And I'm just going to read both verses there, and then we're going to go into the depths of this uh, today so that it might be more of a blessing to you. It says, And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down to the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. All right, and then again in Romans, when Paul is speaking here, he said, For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceit, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. All right, in both cases, when we look at these verses here, it appears to be that, that there's supposed to be some type of space of time where God is dealing with Gentiles, and then after he's done dealing with Gentiles, if you're looking at this in a literal translation verse here, uh, not literal, but in the literal sense of the way it's been uh, translated, and, and then after this is all done, well, then the Jews will suddenly recognize who Jesus Christ is. I have followed that same scenario for many, many years, believing that as well. And then, especially in light of the fact of all these prophecies, whether it be Zechariah in chapter 8, uh, they take a hold of the skirt of him that is a Jewish nam man, actually the wing, Bikanaf, Ishuhudi. That's not in the plural, that is in the singular, but so many of uh, uh, my friends, I shouldn't even say friends, but fellow believers, like you have Shapira, that like to point out to the Imcham right there, uh, on your screen and, and blue that I highlighted there, they like to point to this as, oh, it's in the plural, it's in the plural, it's in the plural. I've explained this over and over and over because the book of Acts actually is the fulfillment of those things there. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. All right, house of Israel. Notice that. Don't forget the house of Israel here. We're going to be talking about these things tonight. Even how Jesus said, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus is on earth and he's saying, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Telling his apostles, right? He also says to the woman there that wants to have her child healed that, you know, it's not me for me to cast the children's bread to dogs. He says, I am not sent but into the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What? I thought everybody is looking for the house of Israel in this day. Oh my gosh. So it's very interesting, I think, what we're going to get into today. Uh, and it's all going to go right back to 70 AD. You're going to really find out some amazing things, uh, I believe. And so I want to kind of cap over the whole scenario before we get started. So it might be a better blessing for you. So you kind of know where we're going. So let's back up. We are in Luke 21. I want to start up here around verse 14. Now, this is kind of similar to that of what Jesus says in Matthew 24. So just keep that in mind. Settle it therefore in your hearts, Jesus says, not to meditate before what you shall answer. All right, let me say, so maybe I should, yeah, I'm sorry, I should have gone up to verse 10. Then said he unto them, nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, 
And great earthquakes shall be in divers places and famines and pestilence and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these things, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Now, Jesus is talking right there to his own, right there that were following him at that time, saying this was going to happen to them. He said they would see the signs of great earthquakes, divers places, famines, pestilence, and fearful sights and great signs there shall be from heaven. Do you know that this is recorded in history? I didn't even know that. Uh, we, I mean, the obvious one should be the famine. I mean, go back to Rome there, right? 70 AD, seven years Jerusalem was under siege. Some people think it was only, you know, from 66 to 70 when the temple was destroyed. No, no. They also had to take Masada as well. So for seven years, from, from 66 AD to 73 AD, they were under siege. Seven years. Now we talk about a seven-year tribulation out of Revelation, right? I don't know. I'm just, just saying it's kind of interesting. Seven years is actually spoken of there. All right. But then the earthquakes, right? Looky here, this is interesting for you, uh, right there. Earthquakes, for example, this is on world history. I just happened to look this up. And you can look at each one of these individually. But if you'll notice who writes about these ones, right? For example, the, uh, the Lycus Valley and cities of per, uh, Pergamum, Laodicea, and Colossus destroyed by earthquakes. Tacticus, Annals, uh, in the uh, 1427 uh, I guess it's the volume of the book that he writes there, writes about that. On the 5th of February of 63 AD, the city of Pompeii was nearly engulfed by an earthquake. In 79, it would be completely buried by uh, Vesuvius. Uh, would be completely buried. Now, that was written by Vesuvius, Tacticus, Annals, uh, and also Josephus uh, wrote in his book of Antiquities, uh, chapter 20, uh, paragraph, or, or Section 7, uh, maybe 2. Then we have a sudden eruption of the sea inundated Lycia, a port city in Turkey, in 60 AD, 68 AD. Then we had leading citizens ruined, whole communities devastated, providing uh, for Vitellius banquets and 60,000 soldiers en route to Rome. That was in 69 AD. All right. So here we had multiple earthquakes, I've, I've, and, and not to mention the biblical ones that are spoken of, too, in 30 A.D. Uh, you have here there was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. Uh, we have the place where the meeting was shaken and they, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. We have uh, uh, earthquake that the foundation of the prisons were shaken for Paul. Uh, and that was well after 30 AD. We don't know exactly what the date was on that there. But it's just interesting that this website right here, prophecyhistory.com, uh, cites some of this. And I know, uh, as my wife was sharing with me too, that a lot of the things we have written right here are recorded. Now, of course, like I said, the famines is obvious. They were eating their own children and stuff in Jerusalem at the time because their food was cut off by the Roman soldiers. And so, and then there's a lot of writings too about uh, the great signs in heavens and stuff. We find this in the early church fathers' writings. I didn't put all that together. Just wanted to kind of point this out. A lot of these things actually were happening back then, and we totally forget about it. We look at it today because all the things that are happening today, and so everybody's saying, oh my gosh, we got all the earthquakes in diverse places. Maybe we do have a repeat of history. Not saying we don't, good possibility. But we got to look at what he says here. But before all these, these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons and, and being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Now, I think it's very important that we look at this here. All right. They're delivering you up to the synagogues. What does that tell us? Until Jerusalem is destroyed, the Pharisee dynasty or the Hasmonean dynasty that was really strongly ran by the Pharisees controlled the believers. 
very much so. And it shall turn you, uh, and it shall turn you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts, not to meditate before what you shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And you shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolks and friends. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death. We saw that betrayal even while Jesus was yet alive. If you think about it, remember the, the man that was born blind that was begging and Jesus healed him and his parents were so fearful they would be thrown out of the synagogue, they didn't dare say a word. That's right. They didn't say anything. They, in fact, they said to, to, the, to the Pharisees, well, he's of age, ask him. Right? That's, that's a form of betrayal. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not an hair of your head perish, and your patience possesses you, your souls. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Jesus is not talking to us, friends. He's talking to the, his, the, the disciples that he had 2,000 years ago. When you shall see Jerusalem pass with armies, then know the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let them which are in the midst of the depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter in there into it. In other words, if you're out in the country, you see it. Don't go back to Jerusalem. You know your days of buying and selling are over. And if you're in there, get to the mountains. Isn't it interesting that Rome actually allowed the Jews that lived in the countryside that were farmers and stuff to stay? That's, that's who your Palestinians are today. Not all your Palestinians. About 50% of the Palestinians are from other nations like Jordan and Egypt and things like that. But 50% of your Palestinians, and this was also known by the early settlers in Israel back in, when Israel became a nation, Ben-Gurion actually went out to try to proselyte to those Palestinians because he knew that they were crypto-Jews. For these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. All right, did you notice what Jesus just said? In verse 20, and when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Jesus says, for these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. So when we do have messianic ministers saying, uh, you got to pray and repent for 70 AD. Jesus said, this is the days of vengeance, which, is to, which was written to be fulfilled. Woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. And we already know the history records it, that they were eating their own children. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Now, after I've explained this, maybe verse 24 actually begins to make sense. Jerusalem would be trodden down, all right, Tromp trampled. Let's look at that. Let me, let me take you to Luke, just for, for uh, this is what I use when I'm just wanting to deal with basic translation type things. Uh, actually, I think it's chapter 21. Um, let's go back, yeah, 21, verse 24. I want to just show you something here. So we kind of look at these things, right? Trodden down. There we go right there. To trample. Literally or figuratively. Figuratively. All right? Once Rome had completed their work, their mission, when they were trying to 
put down the insurrection, which granted, I agree from the very beginning when the Maccabees made the agreement, the peace agreement with Rome is the worst thing they ever did. I agree with that as well. It backfired on them. But it also, Rome was also used to bring about judgment upon Jerusalem because of the idolatry. All right, this is what they had gotten involved in. We're going to get into that when we speak about where Paul talks about this in Romans. All right, but the trodden down is they were trampled. So when the Gentiles, all right, and, and let's just look at each one of these here. Jerusalem shall be trodden down. They shall be trampled by the Gentiles. Why doesn't it say the Romans? Because Titus didn't just use the Roman military. Vaspian, he was not able to put down the rebellion alone. He tried. Now, he did have to go back because he was being uh, brought up to be an emperor of Rome, but he was not as successful as his son. His son went back and his son gathered up the armies out of Turkey, out of Syria, and all those nations there, all the ones that hated the Jews, and he gathered all those nations together and then went in there, and that's how he conquered Jerusalem. But between Jerusalem and Masada, it took seven years to put, this, put the rebellion down. So they were trampled by the nations. That's why it's Gentiles, plural. And that's why it's not just Rome. Until... The times, the time, the space of time that it would take, in other words, that is set or a proper time of those nations be fulfilled. It has nothing to do with the fact until Gentiles all get saved and then God's going to turn back to the Jews. Okay? Salvation is for for the Jewish people, and for not just Jews, but for every Israelite there is, it was for, for them from the day that Christ came until he gave his life on the cross, and even until the world comes to a complete end. The salvation of Israel has never ceased to be. So the fullness of the Gentiles is when they fulfilled carrying out the judgment of Almighty God upon Jerusalem. That's what it is. All right. Now, let's take a look over here in the book of Romans. Now, Paul in verse 25 said that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. Actually, it would be better to translate that until the fulfillment of the Gentiles has entered. He's actually speaking to the exact same thing, because for Paul, this was still a future event as well. And that the blindness was going to stay upon those Jews until they, until what? Until that system of idolatry that they had turned the law of God into was destroyed. In other words, it made it difficult to win Jews to Christ because they had them bound. These rabbis and sages kept their own people bound. I mean, look, let me just show you. Thrown out synagogue. Actually, I think it's put out. Let me, let me do it right. Let me do it right. It's not thrown, put out. It'd be put out of the synagogues, right? All right, now maybe if I pluralize it, it'll make it even better. But here we go right here. John chapter 9. Verse 22, these spake of his parent because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was, that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogues. If they declared that Jesus was the Messiah, they'd throw him out. In chapter 12, verse 42 of the uh, New Testament, nevertheless, among the chief rulers, also many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him lest they should be put out of the synagogue. All right, let me see if pluralizing the word synagogues helps as well. Yeah, there we go. I got another one. John chapter 16, verse 2. 
Jesus said, they shall put you out of the synagogue. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. <laughs> if they kill you, they think they're doing the righteous thing. That's about to repeat. That's one prophecy that's about to repeat. All right. So when Paul in the book of Romans writes this here, Blindness in part has happened to Israel. That wasn't just the house of Judea, of Judah, or the house of uh, Judah, but also happened to Israel, all 12 tribes, until the fulfillment of the Gentiles had entered. And he's, quite, he's basically saying the exact same thing that Jesus said. In other words, until... Titus came in and destroyed Jerusalem to where he could break up that religious sect to where they didn't have the power over the people. All right. Now this is going to get interesting. So bear with me because there's a, I, I'm, we're going to back up now. But when we go past this here, you're going to see a beautiful thing that is written to you as Gentiles, as well as to the Jewish believers and how they should handle um, Israelites that have not yet believed because there is a mer there's mercy in this whole passage. All right, let's let's back all the way. Let me let me maybe I can do it from the bottom is easier here. A previous chapter. We're going to go to Romans chapter 10 first uh, because you kind of have to pick up in here before you go into chapter 11. 